part F, explain with the support of calculations how the new accountant should calculate the minimum number of brighties and giggles that need to be sold so that the candy division does not make a loss. All right, and this is for 20 marks. So guys, if we are looking at how the accountant should calculate the minimum number of brighties and giggles that need to be sold so that the division does not make a loss, we are obviously looking at the calculation of the break-even point. Now, you know the break-even point can either be calculated in units or in rands, but if you look at the required over here, we need to calculate the minimum number of brighties and giggles. So we are looking at the calculation in units. All right. Then in addition to that, we are not only looking at the calculation of the break-even point in units. You'll see this part of the required is for 20 marks. If you only look at the calculation, and if you get the calculation 100% correct, you don't make any mistakes, you will then get 10 out of 20 for this part of the required. So even if your solution is perfect, if you only focus on calculations, you will only get 50% for this part of the required. So it's very important, guys, that you answer the required properly. The required does not only ask for calculations. You need to explain with the support of calculations. Now, this really is not a difficult break-even calculation. You should not have struggled with the calculation. If you did struggle with anything in this part of the required, it was most likely the explanation around your calculations. So because the calculation is so simple and so straightforward, I'm not going to waste your time writing everything out. I'm going to jump to my suggested solution, and instead I really want to focus on the explanation. So I will still cover the calculation and where all of the numbers come from, etc., but I'm just not going to waste your time writing everything out. All right, so up front, it's important to explain that the minimum number of brighties and giggles that need to be sold so that the division does not make a loss is the break-even point. So the required doesn't ask for the break-even point, even in the scenario when it said the accountant is struggling with the calculation, they don't actually mention the break-even point. So it's very important that you make that link. You clearly indicate that the minimum number of units that need to be sold so that the division doesn't make a loss is the break-even point. So that's the first discussion point that we have over here. The break-even point is the activity level where the division will not make a profit or a loss. Or alternatively, you could have said the break-even point tells us the minimum number of units which need to be sold so that the division does not make a loss. Then let's go back to the information provided in the scenario. Let's just read again what we were told here about the new accountant and the calculation. So the candy division recently appointed a new accountant. One of his first tasks is to calculate the break-even point, or what it says in the question is to calculate the minimum number of brighties and giggles that need to be sold so that the division does not make a loss. He did not study this topic at university as he found the calculation extremely confusing if more than one product is sold. He is also unsure of which expenses to include in the calculation. So it's very important when it comes to our explanation that we address both of these concerns that he has over here. So we'll explain the entire calculation, but we must make sure that we specifically focus on how you calculate the break-even point where more than one product is sold, and also which expenses should be included in the calculation of the break-even point. All right, so before we actually get to the calculation, let's discuss which expenses should be included in the break-even point calculation. Now, remember, guys, the logic is any income or any expenses that affect profit or loss need to be taken into account in the break-even point calculation. Because remember, the break-even point is the point where you don't make a profit or a loss. So it's the point where your profit is zero. So any income or any expenses that affect profit or loss must be taken into account in the calculation. So let's go through the expenses that we've been provided with, and we can then discuss each of those in more detail. So firstly, we've been given the total product cost for each of the products, for brighties and for giggles, and we can see what that's made up of. We have milk chocolate, candy, honeycomb, packaging, variable conversion costs, and fixed conversion costs. So those are all of the product costs. 
Now remember guys, in terms of IAS2, all product costs are included in the value of inventory and are only expensed when the inventory is sold. So let's have a quick look at the cost of sales calculation. Remember, we calculate cost of sales by taking opening inventory, adding our product costs, so direct material, direct labor, fixed and variable manufacturing overheads because we are using absorption costing, and then we deduct closing inventory. So that's what the calculation of cost of sales looks like, just roughly. Opening inventory plus your production costs minus closing inventory gives you cost of sales. So the reason why I'm showing you this is it's important to note that we only expense the product costs for the inventory that is sold in the period. This is the cost of sales. It's the cost of what they sell. So the amount that is expensed is based on the units sold during the period. Closing inventory over here, you can see, is not expensed. We reduce cost of sales with closing inventory because closing inventory is sitting as an asset on the statement of financial position. And this asset will only be expensed when the inventory is actually sold. So in future periods, the closing inventory will be added back as opening inventory and it will be expensed in the future when the inventory is actually sold. So that's just a further explanation. We already said in terms of IES 2, all of the product costs are included in the value of inventory. And inventory sits as an asset on the statement of financial position. We only expense that inventory when it's sold. So let's say, for example, they produced, they don't have any units in opening inventory. Let's say they produced 10 units. We're keeping it really basic. And there are two units sitting in closing inventory. We only expense the cost for eight units. It's the cost of what we sell that gets expensed in the current period. So we expense the cost for eight units. The cost for two units is still sitting as an asset on the statement of financial position. That cost will only be expensed when the inventory is actually sold in the future. Now, when we perform break-even calculations, one of the assumptions that we make is there is no opening inventory and there is no closing inventory. So in other words, production is equal to sales. If they produce 10 units and there's no opening or closing inventory, then they will also sell 10 units, which means the full product cost will be expensed in the period incurred. So the full product cost affects profit or loss and should therefore be taken into account in the break-even point calculation. So when we calculate the break-even point, we will include the cost of milk chocolate, candy, honeycomb, packaging, as well as fixed and variable conversion costs, because all of the product costs will be expensed in the period incurred, because we assume that production is equal to sales. So there's no opening or closing inventory, so the full product cost is expensed. The full product cost affects profit or loss, so the full product cost must be taken into account in the calculation of the break-even point. All right, let's see what other costs we have. You were told included in the fixed conversion costs is depreciation on factory plants and machinery of 7 million rand. So we've already said that the fixed conversion costs are product costs. They are included in the break-even calculation because the expense affects profit or loss. However, what about this depreciation expense? Should we exclude it because it's not a cash flow? No. And that's a common mistake that's made by students, guys. You don't exclude non-cash items. We're not looking at relevant costing over here where non-cash items are not taken into account. We are looking at the calculation of the break-even point. So all expenses that affect profit or loss should be taken into account in the calculation. So it's very important, depreciation should not be excluded. Depreciation should be included in the break-even calculation. So we won't take it out of the fixed conversion costs, we'll leave it in. 
Then there are also fixed admin and marketing expenses and selling costs. Now guys, these are period costs. And in terms of IAS 2, period costs are not included in the value of inventory because they are not manufacturing related. They're not production costs. Only production or manufacturing related costs are included in the value of inventory. Period costs are expensed in full in the period incurred. So if the period costs are expensed in full in the period incurred, the expense will affect profit or loss, and it should therefore be taken into account in the break-even calculation. So guys, just be careful here, please. This is another common mistake made by students, where they only include product costs in the break-even calculation, and they exclude period costs. Please don't make that mistake. Both product costs and period costs affect profit or loss, and therefore both should be taken into account in the break-even calculation. All right, so let's have a look at these on the suggested solution quickly. So which expenses should be taken into account in the calculation? All expenses that affect profit or loss should be taken into account in the calculation. So all of our product costs, which is direct material and your conversion costs. And remember, conversion costs is direct labor and manufacturing overheads. So all of these product costs are initially included in the value of inventory, and they are only expensed in profit or loss when the inventory is sold. However, when we are performing break-even point calculations, we assume that production is equal to sales. Or in other words, we assume that there is no opening or closing inventory. So following this assumption, all of the product costs will be expensed in full in the period incurred, which means they should be included in the break-even point calculation because they affect profit or loss. Then for depreciation. Depreciation on the factory plant and machinery is included in the fixed conversion costs of 25 million rand. We haven't done the calculation yet, so we don't yet have that amount. I'll show you when we get to the calculation where that amount is coming from. Then, although this expense is not a cash flow, it should still be included in the break-even calculation because it is an expense that affects profit or loss. And then finally, for the period costs, for the fixed admin, marketing, and sales commission. These are classified as period costs, and in terms of IAS 2, they are expensed in full in the period incurred. So because they are expensed in full in the period incurred, they should be included in the break-even calculation because they affect profit or loss. All right, so we are now going to move on to the calculation of the break-even point. But just remember, each step along the way, you need to explain what you are doing. So firstly, we are going to explain how we calculate the break-even point. So the break-even point in units is calculated by taking total fixed costs and dividing by the weighted contribution per unit. So there's two calculations here we need to perform. We need to calculate total fixed costs, and we need to calculate a weighted contribution per unit. So let's first start with the calculation of total fixed costs. If we go back to the information provided in the scenario, for our period costs, we've got these fixed conversion costs. Now, we know that there is an allocation rate here of 25 Rand per machine hour, and for both of the products, we've also been given the unit costs. We need to try and calculate what this fixed conversion cost is in total because obviously we don't want the rate per hour or the cost per unit. We need the total fixed cost for the year. So we were also told that the fixed conversion costs are allocated to products on the basis of machine hours and normal capacity is 1 million machine hours and included in those fixed conversion costs we have depreciation on factory plant and machinery. So guys, what we can do is we can work backwards. Remember, how do we calculate the fixed overhead allocation rate? We've already looked at this calculation in this paper. We calculate the fixed overhead allocation rate by taking the budgeted fixed overhead, and we divide by 
normal capacity. And remember, where you don't have normal capacity, you can just use your budgeted capacity. So guys, we have the allocation rate. The allocation rate is 25 Rand per machine hour because we know that the fixed conversion costs are allocated on the basis of machine hours. So we would take the total budgeted fixed overhead, we would divide by machine hours, and that would give us a rate per machine hour. So we've got the allocation rate. We also have normal capacity. Normal capacity is 1 million machine hours. So working backwards, we can calculate the budgeted fixed overhead. If we make that the subject of the formula, you can calculate the budgeted fixed overhead by taking your allocation rate and multiplying by normal capacity. So we take the allocation rate of 25 Rand per machine hour, we multiply by 1 million machine hours, and that gives us a fixed cost of 25 million Rand. All right, and if you want to work backwards and calculate the allocation rate, you take that budgeted fixed overhead of 25 million Rand, you divide by normal capacity, which is 1 million machine hours, and that will obviously give you a rate of 25 Rand per machine hour. So you can see everything works out there perfectly. All right, so that's obviously where the amount above came from. The depreciation on factory plants and machinery is included in the fixed conversion cost of 25 million. That's where the 25 million is coming from. All right, so included over there we have depreciation on factory plants and machinery. We are not going to exclude it because the depreciation should be taken into account in the break-even point calculation. Then there's one other fixed cost. We have the fixed admin and marketing expenses. So we just need to include that in the calculation over there. And that gives us total fixed costs of 43 million rand. All right, so very simple calculation, guys. You shouldn't have struggled with that. Then we need to calculate the contribution per unit. So once again, guys, you need to explain. How do we calculate the contribution per unit? What is the contribution per unit? Contribution per unit is calculated by deducting the variable cost per unit from the selling price per unit. So you can see the calculation just below for both of the products. We are going to take the selling price per unit for both products. We are going to deduct the variable cost per unit, and that will give us the contribution per unit. Now, once again, guys, this is a very simple calculation. Firstly, for sales, you were told that selling prices are calculated by adding a 20% markup on total product cost. So all you need to do is take the total product cost for each of the products and add a markup of 20%. And that will give you the selling price per unit. Then for the variable costs, most of them are all given. We've got the variable cost per unit for each of the products for milk chocolate, for candy, for honeycomb, for packaging, and then for the variable conversion costs, the variable conversion costs that vary with direct labor, and the variable conversion costs that vary with machine hours. Obviously, don't take the fixed conversion costs into account because we dealt with that when we calculated total fixed costs. Then just be careful, there is one other variable cost that you need to include in the calculation, and that is the selling costs, so the sales commission, and that's just 5% of sales. So you just take the selling price per unit and you multiply by 5%. All right, so guys, you shouldn't have struggled with any of these calculations over here. All of these amounts over here come directly from the information provided in the scenario, and sales commission is just 5% of sales. So if you were just performing the calculation and you didn't have to explain or discuss anything, directly after this, you would take the contribution per unit for each of the products, and you would calculate a weighted contribution. Now, the explanation isn't difficult, guys. You're just explaining what you are doing in the calculation. So explain that. We now have two different contributions because the company sells two different products. 
So what we need to do is we need to calculate a weighted contribution per unit. So because the division sells two products, we need to calculate a weighted contribution per unit, which will be used in the calculation. How do we calculate the weighted contribution per unit? We use the expected sales mix to calculate the weighted contribution. All right, so if we go back to the information provided, you were given the annual demand over here. So the annual demand is 350,000 units of brighties and 280,000 units of giggles. So please remember, guys, you always use sales volumes in your calculation over here. You always weight using your sales volumes because the assumption that we make is the sales mix will remain constant. So we calculate what that sales mix is, we assume it remains constant, and we use that to calculate the weighted contribution. All right, so you can see the calculation just below. First, I've calculated the total sales volume. And then using that, we calculate a weighted contribution. So all we do is we take the contribution per unit. So first I'm looking at brighties. Take the contribution per unit, multiply by 350,000 and divide by 630,000 because that sales mix will remain constant. Then for giggles, take your contribution per unit and multiply by 280,000 and divide by 630,000 units and that will give you your weighted contribution. All right, you can see I have included an alternative for you over here. So what you could have done instead is you take the contribution per unit for each of the products and you multiply by the number of units so that you get the contribution in total. And then once you have that total contribution, you divide by the total sales volume of 630,000 units and that will also give you the weighted contribution per unit. Then explain what we do next in the calculation. First, we need to calculate the break-even point in total for the candy division as a whole using the weighted contribution. So we take the total fixed cost that we calculated previously, we divide by the weighted contribution per unit that we also calculated previously, and that will give us the break-even point for the candy division as a whole. And please remember, guys, you always need to round up. If you round down to 589,687 units, then the division will not break even. They'll make a small loss. So you always need to round up. Now, you know that because you always do that in your calculations, but make sure that you explain that. So when calculating the break-even point in units, you should round up. Otherwise, the division will make a small loss. Then what do we do next? After you've calculated the break-even point for the division as a whole, we then need to split that between the two different products because if we go back to the information provided in the scenario, he needs to calculate the minimum number of brighties and giggles. So we don't just want the break-even point in total for the division, we want to know how many brighties and giggles need to be sold so that the division does not make a loss. So we need to split that between the two different products. And remember, we do that using the sales mix. So first, explain. The break-even point for the division should be split between the products using the sales mix. The same sales mix that we used to calculate the weighted contribution per unit. All right, so for each of the products, you just take the total break-even point that we calculated for the division as a whole. For brighties, we are going to multiply by 350,000 and divide by 630,000. And for giggles, we are going to multiply by 280,000 and divide by 630,000. We use that same sales mix. And you calculate the break-even point for each of the products. Okay, so that's what I was looking for in part F of the required.